Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Togoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In the previous video, we discussed this graph right here. What this graph shows is that as you change the intensity of exercise, you change the contribution of various fuel sources to that exercise. So during exercise, we rely really on carbohydrates and fat for our fuel sources. And really, it's a combination of these two. It's just a question of which one do we rely more on. Take, for example, 20% VO2 max. So at 20% VO2 max, it appears that fat, which is in this pink color here, we rely on about 60% for energy, and then carbohydrates about 40%. Now we go up in intensity, let's say we do about 70% of VO2 max. Well now we're relying a lot more on carbohydrates, about 80% maybe, and then maybe just a little over 20% on fats. And so you can see from this graph that in general, as we increase the intensity of the exercise from rest, which is about 10%, all the way up to 100%, we drop the amount we rely on fat to where at 100% of VO2 max, we're really not relying on fat at all. And we also increase the reliance on carbohydrate uh, to the point where at 100% VO2 max, we're relying pretty much all on carbohydrate for energy. So this is an important concept to understand. But what you'll see here is this graph looks awfully similar to this graph over here. Uh, but it tells you something extremely different. The one we just discussed, and we also went over in the previous video, is how the fuel source changes with intensity of the exercise, which is measured as a percent of VO2 max. This one on the bottom is the variation of the fuel source with exercise duration, not the intensity. So when we look at this bottom graph, we're assuming that the individual is exercising at the same intensity. Okay, so maybe that intensity is 40% of VO2 max, maybe it's 60% of VO2 max. And they're not changing the intensity, but they're doing it for a long period of time, let's say two hours, maybe three hours, if uh, you're doing some kind of endurance training. So let's suppose we look at exercise duration, where we're exercising at 50% of VO2 max. And that's roughly what this graph corresponds to. So we're gonna look right here at 50% VO2 max. Uh, forgetting the exact percent contributions, notice that at 50% VO2 max, this individual's relying a little bit more on carbohydrates and a little bit less on fats for energy. And that's what we see here. At the onset of exercise, and to be very specific, this right here, this is the onset. This is where the exercise starts. If they're exercising at 50% VO2 max, they're relying a little bit more on carbohydrates, a little bit less on fat, okay? But as we go along the horizontal axis of this graph, it's not changing the intensity, it's changing the duration, okay? So as this exercise is prolonged and it goes on and on, what we see is that we have a decreased reliance on carbohydrates and actually an increased reliance on fat. In fact, the actual curves that we see here are the lines for fat and carbohydrates are actually in, in the reverse order here. So with variation of the fuel source with exercise intensity, as you get to a higher intensity, you rely more on carbs, less on fat. But for exercise duration at a constant exercise intensity, as the exercise goes on and on, you have decreased reliance on carbohydrates and increased reliance on fat. So let's suppose you had an individual who's running at a constant speed, constant intensity, and they're at running at 50% VO2 max. Well, in the first few minutes of exercise, which is close to this onset, you can see they're gonna be relying more on carbs than fat. But let's suppose we go maybe an hour into that exercise, okay? So now an hour in, or maybe right here. Well, maybe at that point, they have an equal contribution of fat and carbohydrates, okay? And that's because even though we started with more reliance on carbohydrates, as the exercise is prolonged, we lose that contribution of carbohydrates in favor of fats. Maybe after two or three hours, we're out here, and you can see that the individual's having a lot less contribution of carbohydrates and a lot more on fat. And, and this trend will continue on until the exercise stops. And the question we want to ask is, why does it do this? 
And it all has to do with the amount of energy that's stored and available in these two forms. Okay, so let's think about carbohydrates for a second. So carbohydrates are stored as glycogen. Um, initially, you'll have them in the liver. They're also stored in skeletal muscle. The liver glycogen will be, will be depleted first, but as you go throughout exercise, you're gonna start using that muscle glycogen, okay? And that muscle glycogen has a finite amount of it that's stored. So eventually, you're gonna have less and less and less muscle glycogen to rely on, okay? Eventually, as you get to really long durations, maybe you're even going four hours, that's not unheard of, there's gonna be so little muscle glycogen that you're gonna start relying on plasma glucose and gluconeogenesis in the liver. So basically some, you could consider them fringe sources of glucose. The key with the carbohydrates is there's a finite amount of it, but that finite amount is far less than we have for fat, because remember for fat, we can draw on adipose stores. And during these kind of exercises, you're not really at risk of running out of fatty acids in your adipose stores. You're not at risk of losing that at all. So the key is, as we go and exercise for prolonged periods of time at the same exercise intensity, we're running out of stored glucose, whether it's as muscle glycogen, whether it's plasma glucose, we're running low on it. And so instead of just using all of it up, we're gonna spare as much as we can by relying more on fat. Because all that fat that's stored in adipose tissue, even if you have a really low body fat percentage, there is plenty of fatty acids in there stored as triglycerides, okay? And so again, as we go on and on and on, we're gonna rely more on, that tri on those fatty acids from adipose tissue, okay? Now the key here to make sure you understand is the difference between these two figures. The one on the top here is how the fuel source varies with the intensity of the exercise. The one we just discussed is how it varies with the duration. And you should understand the reason why we rely more on fat as exercise duration is prolonged. And it actually doesn't matter uh, what exercise intensity we are. If we can somehow manage to exercise at that intensity for a prolonged period of time, we will always see this trend. So for example, over here, if we exercise at 20% of VO2 max, we may still start off with increased reliance on fat, but as we prolong that exercise, we'll see even more reliance on fat, okay? You'd have to probably go a lot longer to see those results, but that's what would happen. Same thing with the carbohydrates. We start off in that case with less reliance on carbohydrates, but again, as you prolong that exercise, you're gonna see this trend and you're gonna rely less and less on carbohydrates. Again, because it's a lower intensity, uh, it would take longer to observe that effect, but you would still see it if you took that exercise out long enough. Now, one question is, would I see the same thing if I exercised up here at 80% of VO2 max? And the answer is likely no, because generally 80% of VO2 max is probably above the lactate threshold. And so that's where you start to see lactic acid buildup and you're using mostly anaerobic metabolism. You would not be able to sustain that for one hour, two hour. There's no way you'd be able to sustain that. So that being said, we don't really have to even worry about these high exercise intensities with this effect because you wouldn't be able to exercise at that intensity long enough to see this. So really we're talking about these moderate exercise intensities. So maybe 50%, even 60% you might be able to do that with, okay? But hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of how fuel source varies with the intensity of the exercise. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.